So long and welcome back. Grab your Bibles, your pen, your notebook, your paper, and let's get started. My name is Patrice Robinson and welcome to Reconcile the Kingdom, where we're working towards becoming a harmony of the whole word of truth. And I hope you have your Bible. I have mine. We're in Esther chapter five and we're going to just get started. We are continue with the two areas. Remember, we have to understand the context and that means not ignoring any context. That means not adding to the context, inventing something thing in the content. And number two, we are going to see if we need to bring any other writings, any other books, any other letters to help us understand chapter five. We're going to get started here and we are going to go through, we on uh, chapter five, verse number one, and um, we're going to go down to number eight. Now, and it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king house and the king set up on his royal throne and in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther, Hadassah, the queen, standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, what will thou queen Esther, and what is thy request? It should be given to thee to half of the kingdom. He was willing to give up half his kingdom to her. That's some favor. Esther answered, Adasa answered, if it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. The king said, cause Haman to make haste that he may do as Esther has said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, and it and it shall be granted thee. And what is thou request? Even to have the kingdom, it shall be performed. Then answered Esther and said, my petition and my request is, if I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and to form and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. So after Hadassah the queen, Queen Esther had fasted and prayed it, it worked for her because she was given favor to the king Ahasuerus. Not only was she given the favor, this favor was so great that he was even willing to give her up to half the kingdom. So the fact Pastor Pran, she was able to break the king's laws. She was able to get favor. He handed out the golden scepter to say that he approved, come. And uh, then he asked her what she wanted. And she wanted them to join the banquet. As we continue to read, Haman thought this was a great thing. He like, I've got favor not only with the king, I have favor with the queen. Remember, the king nor Haman knows her nationality. He does not know that she she is a Jew. These are the same people that he had talked the king into uh, annihilate. Um, and one day on the 13th day of the 12th of month and that whole day that the people can rise up and kill and slaughter all the Jews and take their property. And he is willing to give 750,000 and silver to the king's treasure for allowing them to kill these, uh, to kill the Jews and take their Sure property. Of course, we remember that the king said, I don't need the treasure. You keep the treasure. You can keep everything yourself. We continue in verse 9. Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh, his wife, and Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and all the things wherein the king had 
promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princes and the servants of the king. So he was very prideful of what was going on. He was boasting about all these things. Haman said, moreover, ye, Esther the queen, did not let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared, but myself. He was bragging. And tomorrow am I invited into her also with the king. That all, yet yeah, all this availeth me not so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends said to him, let a gallow be made out of 50 cubits high, and tomorrow speak unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou and merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. He immediately went straight into this of listening to other people to think that it's going to work for him. Haman was full of pride of his position and his connections. He felt special about the invitations from Esther. He really wasn't satisfied because all that he wanted was for the people to be annihilated. And we remember the reason why he wants the Jews to be annihilated. If, if you have missed any previous videos, I heard you to go back so you can understand who Haman is and why did he not only try to destroy Mordecai but why he wanted all the people to be annihilated. With this encouragement from his wife and his friends that he kept, he was able to build a 75 foot gallow believing that he's going to be able to ask the key to be to hang Mordecai that night. Wow this is a high request this is believing that he can hang Mordecai. Haman is an example of what not to do. We do not sit at the seat or walk in the ways of sinners because they will lead you right to your own demise. He specifically spoke to his surrounding friends about, you know, harming other people. Hadassah, Esther, the queen, she did fast and pray for guidance, favor, and boy, did she fool Haman with all of this. And we will find out more when we read chapter six on next Friday at 10 o'clock a.m. So today, so today we did not need to explore any other writings, any other books, any other letters to get a connection of chapter 5. We was able to get a clear understanding of it without adding, without subtracting, inventing any context. We read the context as it is. I hope you enjoyed today's biblical content. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, comment, like, and share this video as a way of showing your support. May Jehovah bless you and keep you. May Jehovah shine his face on you and give you his favor. May he shine his face towards you and give you his peace. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Thank you.